I'm Manfred Kohl. I live in Canada and I represent an organization called Overseas Council International, an organization that is helping theological schools all over the world. And that's the reason why we have a connection with SATS right here in Johannesburg, South Africa. And I'm very honored to be here and to share with you a message that is very dear to, to my heart. I had the privilege of speaking to the faculty and to the staff just a few days ago about this topic. It is a story that Jesus, during his earthly ministry, was focusing on the Samaritans. We don't know exactly why he pointed out that the Samaritans are very special. See, the Jews didn't like them. The Jews had a distance to them. But Jesus pointed out they can be an example. So there is a story in Luke chapter 10, a beautiful story that is recorded in, in our Bible. Probably the story that is most known all over the world. In Luke 10, beginning with verse 25 and ending with verse 37. By the way, I have an accent. I'm originally from Germany, so you have to listen very carefully. And you can read the text, of course, and you will be very blessed. A, a man came to him, an academic, probably a lawyer, who asked the question, Master, I'd like to go to heaven. The most important question anyone can ask. And Jesus said, don't you know what the law requires? Don't you know your Bible? But then he got very concerned about one phrase, that you should care about your neighbor as you care about yourself. And he asked, who is my neighbor? And so Jesus told him a story. It is almost like a children's story. But I discovered that that story is probably the most important story for missions. It is on the cutting edge of missions. Let me outline it for you. Jesus said a man was going from Jerusalem down to Jericho. And everyone understood that Jerusalem, the beautiful city, the city on the top of a hill, the city of God where the temple is, and beautiful, down to Jericho in the valley of death. A man was going down and the thieves took everything away leaving him half dead on the road of life. And there are so many, many, many. There are millions of people on the road of life, empty, waiting for help. And Jesus made a statement that is absolutely shocking. He said a pastor, he said a priest, today we would say a pastor, he was so busy, he, he walked down the same road, he saw him, but he was so busy, he had no time for people in need. What a judgment. And a Levi, which was a, an active church member today, maybe a choir director, maybe a youth leader, maybe the director for the mission, so busy, running from one conference, from one meeting to another, they saw him, but they walked by, they had no time to help. Or if he had time, we could discuss that point in details, but you can use your own imagination what that means. And maybe it is a point that you and I have to take more serious. Are we like that priest and Levi who just walked, by, walked down the same road and have no time for others? But then the Samaritan came. And Jesus is pointing out a Samaritan. He did not go down the same road. He came across road. He traveled, probably a businessman, we don't know. But he came to that place. And I want to point out 10 unique steps for missions. 10 steps that you can teach in your mission class. 10 steps that you and I should follow very carefully. 
step number one. It says, he saw him. My friend, we have to learn to open our eyes. We have to learn to see more, not to talk more. The Samaritan kept his mouth shut, but he opened his eyes to see people the way God sees people. To see your, your relatives the way God sees them. To see your neighbors, your friends, the people in your, in your university class, the people in your workshop, the way God sees them. Oh God, open my eyes that I can see. Secondly, it says the Samaritan had compassion. And compassion is not in your mouth. Compassion is in your heart. My friends, we have to learn to have more compassion. Oh, please pray. Let my heart be broken with the things that break the heart of God. Do we still have compassion for lost people? Do we still have compassion for lost relatives of ours? What are we doing about it? Are we going helping? He had compassion. Number three, it says he went to him. He did not talk down to him. No, he went. He went down to where he was. He was not afraid of the, the thieves. He was not afraid of getting messy or getting involved or getting dirty or bloody. Didn't matter. He went. He went down on his knees, not talking down as we usually do. No, he went down. Number four, beautifully described, he covered the wounds. He did not dig into it. You know, that is our problem in our churches. The gossiping, we talk about other people's problem. Did you, did you see what she did? Did you hear what he said? He covered the wounds. It's no one's business. That person knows the wounds. God knows the wounds. No one else has to know. Stop gossiping behind other people's back. Stop talking about other people's problem. Cover the wounds. And our churches would be so much healthier. Cover the wounds. And then it says, beautifully, number five, he poured in oil. He had oil with him. And in the Old Testament, oil is symbolizing of having grace and having love and having compassion and, and having, having time and having love for people. Do you have oil with you as you go for ministry? Have your oil with you when you meet with other people, when you talk to them? He had oil. He had oil. And then, of course, he also had some wine for cleansing. It needs cleansing, but it comes in the end. Cover the wound, pouring oil, and then comes the cleansing. And then comes the next point, which is so unique, number six. He lifted up that person and put him on his own, own beast, his own animal. It might have been a donkey, it might have been a horse, we don't know, just a, an animal. Today it would be a very valuable item we possess. Maybe your car, maybe your motorbike. Maybe something that is very precious to you. The Samaritan was willing to give it away. To give it away for someone who needs it. He did not say to the person, listen, I helped you. Listen, I, I did everything I can. Go back to Jerusalem where you belong to. Giving all kind of advice, the Samaritan was quiet. So far he didn't talk. He didn't say one single word. He did not ask, my friend, do you belong to my church? Do you belong to my, my tribe? you belong to my group of people? No, Samaritan did not ask. He just helped. He just showed that love and kindness is for everyone. So he put him on his beast, and my friend, the Samaritan, walked. He took second place. Number seven, he took second place. So often we want to be number one. In ministry, in our churches, in our committees, in our classroom, we want to be number one. We want to be heard, we want to be seen. The Samaritan 
he was number two. He walked behind. The other people came first. The, the man in need or the, the woman in need came first. And then as they walked along, number eight, beautifully, they took him to an inn. Well, an inn at that time was probably a place where you can help a, a person physically, mentally, spiritually. It was not just a first aid station, it was a combination of a, a, maybe a, a, a hotel and a church and a hospital and a counseling center, all, all combined. It was a place where you could bring half that people. And I ask myself so often, where are the inns today? Is your church an inn? Is your church and your Bible study and your fellowship group a place where you could bring a half dead person to feel comfortable? Is, is, is your, the place of, of your ministry, even your classroom, is it a place where you could bring someone in who has some real deep problems, whatever they might be? And the Samaritan took care of him. It's not saying, Pastor, you take care of him. Teacher, you take care of him. No, the Samaritan took care of him. Oh, my friend, we have to get involved in ministry. That point number eight, he took care of him, is so important. He took care of him. And then the next day, which is very unique, the next day, he took out some money. He, he did not even know the, the membership. He did not even know the person. He did not even ask for his name yet. He just showed love and compassion and demonstrating what it means to help. He took his wallet out, so to speak, and paid the innkeeper. Oh, what a wonderful gesture. My friend, we have to learn to share more of what God has given us, to share it with other people. Oh, I wish that everyone would be involved in sharing the richness and the blessings God has given you with other people. I don't know why so few people share with outreach ministry, give money to, to people in, in, in your city, who are homeless, who got into the wrong direction, no hope, they are hopeless. We have to learn to share. And then something very unique happened. He said to the, to the innkeeper, here is the money and if you need more, I will come back and I will pay you the rest. He made a promise. And everyone knows Samaritan, that Samaritan kept his promise. I hope you are a person that everyone knows when he makes, when she makes, when they make a promise, they will keep it. I can, I can rely on it. What they say and what they do is the same, and what they do and what they same, say is the same. For the first time, the ten steps the Samaritan spoke. It is so unique. He was involved in nine steps of ministry. And number 10, he spoke. You know what we are doing? We talk nine times. And then maybe in number 10, we do something. Oh, what an what a exciting story. For me, it is probably the most important story for missions. And every student and every person involved in mission should study that, that story very carefully. The Samaritan, he saw, number one. Number two, he had compassion. Number three, he went where the person was in need. Number four, he covered the wound. He covered the wound. Number five, he had oil oil of kindness and love and grace and, and then the wine for cleansing. Number six, he put him on his beast. He gave him the most valuable thing he possessed 
to a stranger he did not know his name. And he took second place, number seven. He had to walk. Number eight, he knew where an inn was, where he could bring people in need, where he could take care of them, where he himself got involved in helping that person. And then number 10, he so beautifully spoke as he gave some of the money and made a promise that he will pay the rest. But the end of the story is the key. The last phrase where Jesus said, you must do the same. Did you hear that? Jesus, Jesus said in scripture very clearly, you, I, must do the same. My friend, what a story. The 10 steps of missions. Be a missionary. Be involved in helping other people. The world needs us. The world needs you and me. God bless you. Amen.